Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating patterns inside Adobe Photoshop using Adobe Capture, but we're not just doing that. We're also looking at how we can extract those patterns to, for example, package them up to sell or give away. So I'm going to start with a brand new file. It doesn't matter how big your file is. Mine happens to be 3600 by 3600. I'm going to the Libraries panel, so I'm choosing Window and then Libraries. And you're looking for this plus sign down here in the bottom of the Libraries panel. You'll click here on Extract from Image. And then you'll be faced with a dialog that lets you go and select a file to use. I'm clicking here to select a file. I'm selecting a photo of some flowers and clicking Open. Now automatically this extract from image dialog will be open and you want the patterns option. And here you get to choose what your pattern's going to look like. Just going to make my dialog a little bit bigger. Now there are various pattern options here that you can select from. And once you select something that you want to use, then you can scale it. You can scale this piece in here so that you're making the actual image bigger inside this rectangle. If you want it to be smaller so you have more detail, you can make it smaller. You can also rotate the image so that you get a different effect. And basically at this point, what you're looking for is a pattern that you like and that you are interested in working with. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm just going to click to save it to my CC libraries. So what's happened at this point is that the pattern itself has been saved to my library and I can use that in any document in future simply by opening up a brand new document and double clicking on this pattern. It's automatically added to this document in this case at a scale of 25%. But of course, the problem here is that this is not a pattern in the patterns dialog. It's a pattern inside the library panel. You can see that it's not here anywhere inside my patterns dialog. So that means I can't do anything with it in the sense that I can't share it with somebody else. So the way that you're going to be able to do that is to go to your layers panel because this is a pattern fill layer. You would typically add this to a document by choosing layer and then new fill layer and pattern. So it's just a standard pattern fill layer. When you double click on this, you can select a different pattern fill. But again, of course, the pattern that we're using here is not represented in this dialogue. It just doesn't exist in this dialogue, but we can put it there. What we're going to do at this point is go to this flyout menu and choose new pattern and click OK. And now this pattern here is added to our patterns panel and that gives us the ability to do some really interesting things. Let me just get out of here. Let's go back to our patterns panel. Just going to go down to the very bottom here where our pattern is. Now if I hover over this pattern, I can read its size. And that's really important in terms of sharing it with somebody else. Or for example, sending it to a site like Spoonflower. So my pattern is 2660 pixels by 1536. Your pattern swatch is going to vary in size depending on how it is that you created it inside that dialog. Different swatch types have different sizes. But once you've got the size written down, then for example, to send it to Spoonflower, what you're going to do is to create a document the exact size that you read off for that pattern. So I'm going to do that right now, file and new. And my size was 2660 by 1536. This is the size of my pattern swatch. I'm going to choose edit and fill, and then I'm going to choose pattern. And from the custom pattern list, I'm going to choose my pattern. And this will give me one repeat. Now, if you're sending things to Spoonflower, this is exactly what you want. You want a single repeat of this image. You would save this as a high quality JPEG image, sRGB color space, and upload it to Spoonflower. If you are selling patterns, then you could sell this document as a pattern swatch. The other thing that you could do is you could export the pattern to a file. Let's just go to Window and Patterns again. This is my pattern piece here. I would go to this flyout menu and I would choose Export Selected Patterns. And this would export that one pattern swatch as a PAT file. PAT files are how Photoshop expects its patterns to be delivered to it. 
So again, a user could use this Photoshop PAT file to import into their patterns dialog and use inside their version of Photoshop. So it's one thing to be able to create patterns inside the libraries panel in Adobe Photoshop and quite another thing to understand exactly what's happening in the background and understanding what you can do with this actual pattern piece, particularly if you're doing things like sending things to Spoonflower. Now, before we finish up, if you're interested, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer. Typically, mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family, friends and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.